One of the things that we know that contributes to people having persistent problems over time is that they tend to engage in self-focused, mentally defeating thinking processes. They see themselves as a victim as compared to a survivor, let alone a thriver. You know, it, it's, it's really interesting that in the aftermath of exposure to a traumatic event, language is often inadequate to describe to other people or to oneself what you've been through. In fact, if you listen to the accounts of people who've been through these traumatic events, they become poets of sorts. The person who's been sexually victimized says that I am a prisoner of the past. I'm a walking time bomb, the soldier says. I'm contaminated, I'm soiled. That particular language is not just metaphorical. Imagine what is the impact of telling yourself and others that you're a prisoner of the past. I, over a period of time, have in, embraced a constructive narrative perspective on human behavior. You see, we are all homo narrans, not just homo sapiens. We're homo narrans. We are storytellers. And I'm going to forcefully argue that the nature of the stories that people tell themselves and tells others will go a long way and influence whether you're part of that 75% or whether you're part of that 25%. And the metaphors that you use, the language that you employ, the kinds of stories, whether they're healing and redemptive or whether they're mentally defeating, will influence where that goes. But it's not only the nature of the stories, it's, it's that that particular traumatic event has violated, shattered your belief system. Your notion that the world is safe, that people are trustworthy, that events are predictable, may be shattered. And moreover, you may believe that the kinds of changes that you experience are permanent, that the world is unsafe, that, that men are untrustworthy, that there's no place safe, okay? Not only that, when you have this kind of ideational content, if, if, if you want psychopathology, if you want to experience PTSD, you have to ruminate. You cannot just let it go. Okay? This is something that you need to engage in on a regular kind of basis. Moreover, one of the things that would be valuable is to engage in contrafactual thinking. That is to engage in thinking process where you keep asking why questions. Why did this happen? What could I have done? What? And what happens is there are no readily acceptable answers to that. And that kind of ferments the nature of the ideational content that contributes to the kind of persistent PTSD. It would also be valuable from the work of Ehlers and Clark to have what are called overgeneral memories. That you have been unable to incorporate this traumatic event in a coherent fashion in your ongoing narrative. That this becomes the defining landmark for you as an individual. And one of the things we know from Ehlers and Clark and other people is that people who've been victimized have overgeneral memories. They, they don't see things as problems to be solved. They have a thinking style that exacerbates the nature of their ongoing stress. And moreover, that contributes to the kinds of feelings of hopelessness and despair. P people may also engage in what are called thinking traps. That is, they may engage in black-white thinking. They may overgeneralize. They may have arbitrary influences in the light. What am I doing? I'm sharing with you the research findings that highlight the role that cognitive factors play in the initiation and maintenance and persistence of post-traumatic stress disorder and related difficulties.